Back in 2006, Gears of War launched with critical acclaim and two more titles, each surpassing the previous installment, released later on. Now Gears of War creator Cliff Belinsky has left the franchise and a new studio has taken responsibility for the latest installment, Gears of War 4. Starring a brand new protagonist, Gears of War 4 is everything that a Gears fan could want from a sequel, but those uninterested in the franchise since it launched won't find anything to pull them in here. It finds a way to change. The little larva becomes a chrysalis. Inside, it destroys and rebuilds itself, changing its color, its shape, it gets wings, claws. It slashes its way out of its cage, and then... and then it's new and beautiful. Gears of War 4 takes place 25 years after the events of the first game. Emulsion, the parasitic fuel source responsible for turning locusts and humans into lambent, has been completely exterminated along with the locusts on Sarah thanks to Marcus, his father, Adam Phoenix. Humanity is dangerously unpopulated, and powerful storms called wind flares are destroying everything in their path. The Correlation of Ordered Government, or COG, have declared martial law and enclosed the few thousand of humans still alive within the walls settlements to protect the people from the storms while trying to repopulate. Those refusing to join the Cog cities live outside the walls as outsiders, similar to the Stranded in the original trilogy, and raid Cog bases in search of supplies. You take control of Marcus Phoenix's and Anya Stroud's son, J.D. Phoenix, as he travel along with his friends, Delman Del Walker and his girlfriend, Kate Diaz. As they attempt to stop a new threat to humanity, these creatures called the Swarm is kidnapping people and it's up to J.D. and his friends to find out why. The story does have a strong start, with a powerful mystery revolving around the Swarm as the game progresses, issues begin to pop up. Unlike the first Gears of War, I never felt a strong sense of camaraderie between these characters. JD mostly stole the show thanks to his relationship with Marcus, who easily overshadows everyone else. Kate never manifests into anything interesting, and Dale felt more like a space occupier. Okay. Unlike Coltrane's charismatic attitude or Damon Baird's cocky banter, Kate and Dell seemed more like five bots. I almost forgot they were even there until one of them spoke. Speaking of speaking, voice acting in Gears of War 4 is on point with each actor bringing their character to life. It's unfortunate that they aren't very interesting. You know as well as I do, Dell know that he can help. Gears veterans will be able to play Gears of War 4 without issue. Much of the control screen has remained the same. You'll aim with the left trigger, shoot with the right, use cover to block enemy fire, and perform brutal executions. If the enemy is down, you can get close enough to perform one of these vicious kills. Most of the executions are the same from Gears of War 3 in Judgment, with the exception being the new weapons. New weapons are like the buzz kill that shoots saw blades and the drop shot that shoots explosive drills. New is the ability to pull enemies towards you, like the mantle kick, which stuns enemies, if they happen to be on the opposite side of a piece of cover you mantle over, you can grab enemies in cover and pull them towards you. Performing either the mantle kick or the grab will allow you a few seconds to perform an instant knife kill. If you time it correctly, you can even attempt to grab enemies who are attempting the mantle kick. This is especially much more effective against enemy players who use the running gun technique with the Nasher. Graphically, Gears of War 4 looks fantastic. Character models are wonderfully detailed, especially the swarm. Wind flare segments and high action sequences are showcased how much time and effort went into crafting these environments. Perhaps the best improvement is the soundtrack. The new melancholy tone paints a very different atmosphere from the past games. The title theme alone was much more welcoming and common when compared to other games setting the game's new tone. The campaign does support two character cooperative play either split screen or online. You cannot split the difficulty like in Gears of War 3, but it's a welcome addition and the campaign is much more entertaining with a friend. Horde mode has been completely refined. Included are two new classes including the Engineer, Heavy, Scout, S Sniper, and Soldier. Each one has specific talents that are critical in surviving the onslaught. Each class has their own leveling tree encouraging you to try each class. Player models are not set for specific class allowing you to swap whatever character you want. 
Most are variants of existing characters like Del, Cole, JD, and other noteworthy characters. Horde still has you fending off waves of enemies with each 10th wave being a boss fight and the 11th wave boosting the enemy's health, accuracy, or damage. Players can now gather resources and feed it to the Fabricator, a machine of generating barriers, decoys, and turrets. Since resources are pulled into one Fabricator, a bad ally can waste your resources for selfish upgrades to feed their kill count, making communication paramount to success. Beast Mode has not returned to Gears of War 4, which is unfortunate. The chance to play as a swarm was one of my desires in this game. Competitive multiplayer offers 10 maps and 7 modes. Classic modes such as Team Deathmatch, Execution, Guardian, and King of the Hill are available. Other modes include Dodgeball, where an ally player gets vied for killing an enemy player, Arms Race, where your weapon changes every 3 kills. Deathmatch has not returned, so for those hoping for a solo experience, you're out of luck, unless the Coalition decides to put it in a later update. Completed missions in the campaign, competitive matches, or horde mode waves net you experience to boast your overall level and points. Points can be used to purchase packs that give you cards, including bounties, class skills, customizations, consumables, and horde cards. Consumable versus cards and horde cards are separately divided so they don't work interchangeably with one another. These can be purchased for real world currency if you choose. Customization isn't limited to your appearance. This includes weapons of all types and emblems for each multiplayer mode. Bounties grant you, grant you extra experience or CR for completing specific objectives. The harder the task, the more you gain. If you choose to destroy a card, you'll get scrap. This scrap can be used to unlock new characters. In hindsight, Gears of War 4 has a lot of reasons to keep you coming back, encouraging you whether you win or lose that you'll always be thriving with new loot to unlock. I've said a lot of positives about Gears of War 4, but what about the negatives? The issue was that I'm mainly a seasoned Gears of War player and this is just like the games I've played in the past. This isn't bad, but it also means that those who've had no interest in the franchise or this genre won't find anything worth investing into. It's a Gears of War game. If you like the franchise, you'll enjoy the game. Is Gears of War 4 the best Gears of War ever? No, that belongs to Gears of War 3. But don't dismiss Gears of War 4. It's an amazing third person shooter that does the franchise justice and has a lot of potential for evolving into something great. Gears of War 4 ends with a lot of questions going on as to, but that's the point. It's the start of a new journey, and I cannot wait to see what the next game has in store for us. Until then, you can keep busy with the large amount of multiplayer content, but those tired of the franchise or were never interested in the first place. Gears of War 4 won't change your mind. For everyone who's a fan of Gears of War and this genre, this is more what you love for, with a new beginning. Alone if I have to. If he can't help. We'll be right beside you.